Well, look at this, y'all. We're actually working from a V2 summary video. It's another Starbase summary. But what happened was we uh, got a video ready. And then the static fire happened, so we figured we'd tack it in here. So if you're interested in the static fire, stick around for the end of the video. Started off over at the high bay. They keep taking that thing apart. Over here at the launch site, those are some uh, frames for the thrust diverter, flame diverter, down at pad B. Lowering pieces down into that new trench that they have already poured the concrete in as they continue work there. Here we've got ship 20 scooting around in the rocket garden, I guess. And then we're going to run all the way out to Massey's to look at this structural test stand they've been working on. Remember, Massey's is actually a couple miles away from the production site, which is just about two miles away from the launch site. And uh, this is the place where they can roll the ships and boosters out so they can run tests on them without slowing down the work that happens at the launch site. So remember, you want to do a static fire like is coming up later in the video, you've actually got to set down the cranes, get all the lifts out of the way, remove the scaffolding, like do a bunch of stuff to prepare for that booster to do that static fire over on the actual launch pad. So if you can test your stuff out at Massey's, it makes more sense. Thing is, they can't test everything out at Massey's. Cryo test ship static fire, sure, but all the way out at the launch site. Oh, is that a Bolin camera in the back? That's a Bolin camera in the background of that shot. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it makes more sense to, to test it over at Massey's than at the production site. <laughs> I digress. We continue to watch. Uh, these are some of the rams down on the bottom of that test structure. Here again, I didn't see any comments about the, Star, the Starlink uplink building in the last video. I had pointed that out. See if you all see it at that time. Here's another part of the flame trench wall. These clips are coming fast and furious today, y'all. Another piece being removed from the high bay section, the high bay floor section. It's like all over the place. It's like the launch site, then Massey's, then the production site, then the Massey's, then back to the launch site, then over here, then a piece is getting cut off. It just never stops <laughs> out there at Starbase. There is the roundabout again. I see half of a roundabout. Could a semi-truck do a turn there? Eh, maybe so. Let's let's see. That the sense of scale there is a little bit better. But I continue to watch that roundabout. Those are some big pipes. Look at those green pipes in the foreground. Must be taking water over towards pad B. That is a lot of water that needs to move during the uh, upside down shower head maneuver. Have a little bit of reflecting pool there in the front of pad B. Different angle here. Mary was getting. There you can see the chopsticks. Those shorter chopsticks already have the little catch plates, plates pads. It's been a long time since we've called, called them uh, steel newtons, but there you go. There is more of that gantry work. Nice. The, the stair steps going up to the top to work on the thing. Here's that SpaceX crane. We've seen a lot of disassembly happening here. Maintenance, need to fix some stuff. I know we've been seeing this thing uh, coming apart for a while. I had to guess probably like routine maintenance. You keep the stuff out there for long enough, you probably have to keep up with it. Nice little artistic reflection there, looking at the more battle-damaged pad A. Hey, look. The lines are purging. You can actually see the vapor coming out. Some of them have the covers on them still. I imagine those vapors are coming out of those central lines there that you don't see the covers on. How cool is that? Oh, there's a little one down on the bottom purging too. <laughs> there went another cover getting popped off. <laughs> Rewind it and see the little red cover go pew, like getting popped off by the pressure. Uh, keep it clean till you need to purge it out, I guess. Look at that. Oh, you can even see the, look at the, the gases rising out of that. That's interesting. So this is now the Raptor Quick Disconnect blowdowns. Foreshadowing, this is all in preparation for that static fire we're going to see at the end of the video. But these are the uh, pipes that go around the outside, I guess connections that go around the outside of the ring that connect to the outer Raptors on the booster itself. Look at that. <laughs> Replay that a couple times. That's delightfully mechanical. 
Y'all probably think I'm crazy when I laugh like a maniac at stuff like that, but it's just so cool to see the thing retracting in to get clearance and the cover coming down. It pulls away from the body of the rocket because the rocket's going to be going up. You don't want anything to make contact. You need room for the shield. And then there you have it, that shield sliding into place, getting between it and the rocket. It has to be skinny about it because the body of the rocket is there, right? And that thing has the sort of like... Get its way down in between the, the body of the rocket and the plates that have retracted a little bit to protect all those connections. Oh, nice! Caesar got an up close thing of the Starlink gateway. There's the building with all the Starlink uplink, uh, Starlink uplink terminals. Star, you can't call them Starlinks. They're already called Starlinks. The star ups, up stars. Help me out. I don't know. I did see some speculation in the comments on this one that uh, maybe there's going to be another pipe come around this way and is going to connect to manifolds on this side as well. Is that just an awful lot of extension cords? <laughs> that was interesting. But uh, I, I saw some people sort of speculating exactly how that was going to come together. It'll be interesting. Like, no spoilers. I don't even want to see, like, a schematic or anything if anybody have it. I has it. I just love to watch that thing sort of come together. In one day, I'll be delighted and surprised that they start to put a pipe along the side and then another manifold comes in or whatever, right? Aha! If you've been around the summaries enough, you know why it's important when a stand goes in or out of the mega bay, right? We watch the stands moving around. Stand going into the mega bay. Let's see what comes back out of the mega bay on the stand. That'll be interesting. Now... Okay, we're lifting this up. We're putting it on sort of this little chassis. I wouldn't put my fingers in there, but, you know, that's just me. Um, okay, we're picking it off of that right now. The smaller crane <laughs> moving the part of the other crane along. This is delightfully manual. Looks like we had a little bumper there to stop it from rolling. Does it have a brake he can grab? Can he stop that thing? Does he need to run to the other side and, like, do a cartoon, dig your heels into the concrete as it pushes you? I don't actually know. <laughs> Caesar being very productive here as well. Get another shot over from Massey's. There's the ship static fire gantry labeled there. That, of course, has the flame diverter underneath it, hidden in the trees, that fires that out over into the Rio Grande, or over over the Rio Grande, I guess. It's like, hey, Mexico, you need some rocket exhaust? Here you go. And it fires it uh, out across the Rio Grande. All right. We've apparently... I've seen a lot of stuff in the community on this. We've apparently labeled this 14-2. And that is sort of in following with... The naming convention, oh, I love the underlights on the SPMTs. The naming conventions that they use for the Falcon 9s, right? So a Falcon 9 flies and gets reused, and they add a dash number after its name. And it's, <laughs> it's like a recovery sort of thing, if I remember correctly. Like, it's not, it doesn't get the dash 2 after it flies the second time. It gets the dash 2 after it is recovered after the first flight, and now it's like dash 2 ready to go for flight 2. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I, I read about a little bit of the history on that just to make sure that I had it straight in my brain because it's easy to get flipped around. But the reason it has 14-2 is because it's been recovered and it's now been prepared for reuse. And it sort of solidifies that dash 2 when it flies again. I, tell me down below. Oh, nice. Of course, Gage. That's actually a really nice uh, great blue heron there. Great heron? Blue heron? Great Blue Heron? Either way. Uh, leave it to Gage to get some good bird shots there. But, anyways, uh, now you can see it says Booster 14. Is it supposed to be Booster 14-2, right? But debate below reasons for and against should it earn the Dash 2 before it's actually flown? Like, what if you recover it and it gets a Dash 2, but then it never ends up flying again because of some issue or whatever? I... Uh, I see the cases like for and against using it that way, right? I get it. It's very exciting. You've recovered it. You intend to reuse it. Reuse it. So you're going to give it this this honorific or whatever suffix to its name, right? It, has it really deserved it yet? Is the dash to stolen valor <laughs> since this booster has not actually flown that second flight? Hum. 
I don't, you know, I, I sort of wonder what side I come down on there. I'll read a bunch of your comments in, in the future uh, when we see that nomenclature again. You tell me what you think. But there on the pad, removing some of the pieces, the, the scaffolding and rails and that sort of stuff, right? Uh, preparing for the static fire that's coming up here at the end of the video. I'm really curious about your arguments for and against the use of the dash, too. Of course, I am speaking from the future, past future now, nice pumps, uh, because SpaceX has officially put out a tweet that was not out earlier today saying that they had tested Booster 14 in preparation for the first Booster reflight as Flight 9 coming up here, right? Flight 9? Yeah, it's Flight 9. Okay. Um, I'm like thinking of patches in my head, and I just got my patch 8 today from the uh, NSF shop. It just got delivered, but this is for Flight 9. Uh, so, I'm speaking from the future, from the frame of reference of the video that I already know they've said that they intend to refly that thing in any event. That's some rebar. Like to see a good, a good concrete rebar supported roadway there because that asphalt just doesn't work. Is it large enough for those trucks to turn around? Man, I need to see like a truck in the frame at the same time right next to it. This is this is a thing. Okay, remember the Stargate building? The Star Stargate building was that building that was being rented from a UTRGV, and they were using his offices, administrative space, yada, 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 and they're going to bury the Stargate. That was a joke in a previous video. Well, they had some of these door guardian artifact engines inside of Stargate, right? And we saw there them removing them from Stargate because they're preparing to get rid of that building. It's static fire time, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. We're going to see this from a couple different angles. That was from sort of the beach position there. Here's one from Mary. Love the water in the foreground and the way the wind is sort of... And look how the, the, the plume is moving along with the water there. I realize I'm talking over this. If you want to listen to the pure audio from the static fire from multiple different angles and distances, switch back over to the other audio track, right? But look at that. There's some water in the foreground there. And Good night, Irene. Look at that. <laughs> oh, here's a wide shot. This is actually a sky cam. We deploy this camera pointed straight up during booster catches, and it sort of catches the booster and sees the booster coming back down towards the pad. But here we've pointed it toward the pad. The wind here today blowing from the south, a little piece of debris coming down there. Uh, in any event, rewind that all you want, play it back, change to the ambient audio track. It's Klingon if you need to choose that. You want to hear it in Spanish, change to the, uh, the other audio track. Alex, I think, is going to do some recording there. Adrian's still on the road, but we'll have Adrian back in the future. Rewind that. Play it as many different audio tracks as you want. But for now, my name's John. I'll respond to you down in the comments. Is Das. Thanks for watching, and we will see you nerds later.